Well, here we are on Friday morning, and Pat McCart is fit and raring to go in Donegal. How are you, Pat? Grand, Jude. How are you? Good morning. I'm extremely well. I believe you're going from strength to strength with the Mirror, Irish Mirror. Oh, I heard you were on the about... front page of the Irish oh, Mirror uh, this yes. week. This week. I, I, Jude, you know, um, I, I, what is the, Samuel Goldwyn says? Start with a climax and work your way up. <laughs> 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 so... Next week they'll probably fire me. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, Pat. I yeah. think you've rapidly yeah. made yourself indispensable, which is uh, good. Uh, a good strategy uh, always in these things. Uh, That's thanks terrific. Very much. Anyway, yeah. shall we proceed to our our listed items first? Then, um, well, and we, again, we'll try to keep it down to the 15, 20 minutes, Pat. I think that okay. was more successful the last yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Not that we're not prepared to talk for hours, but uh, you know, <laughs> just other people don't appreciate us as much as we appreciate each other. The story that um, is sort of in the headlines, both on TV and uh, I took it from the from your paper, the Mirror, uh, uh, yes. is um, this question of Ursula von der Leyen saying that the EU has made a contract with AstraZeneca, and AstraZeneca isn't delivering on it. Uh, yeah. And meanwhile, is it Michael Gove is saying that the UK has a contract and it signed its contract before the EU, and it's going to hold on to all its doses. Have you have uh, you have you looked at that story, Pat? Yeah, you know, some, I, I don't know where it's going, and I, I think there might be a. But well, uh, Van der Leyen said that the contract is crystal clear that they made a deal. Eighty million uh, batches were to be sent to the EU in, in the first phase, and it now looks like they could be getting as little as twenty five percent of that. There are also claims, and I'm not hundred percent certain about this, that uh, there were uh, parts of this vaccine are made up in uh, AstraZeneca's factory in Belgium, which were exported to Britain. And now Britain's saying we're not giving it to, to you. So I, I think it's Charles Michel, who is the uh, president of the uh, EU, he's saying they should seriously consider taking legal action and, which is very, very strong, blocking any exports from Belgium uh, of uh, this, because they need the, uh, I presume they need the component from Belgium to finish off the product. That they, you know, So this is how serious it is. I think what's happened, Jude, and I think it's uh, big politics, geopolitics here. The uh, Britain is now out of the EU, and it's got a share. And it says we're not sharing; we want our, we're holding on to ours. And uh, I think the EU think they've got played by AstraZeneca. That basically Britain has lead, led or uh, leaned on us. This is what it seems now. That it could be totally wrong that they've leaned on AstraZeneca. And AstraZeneca as a firm or a company or a corporation between a rock and a hard place because of the big uh, political row. Well, they're having a hard time, but they've been, you know, the, the pressure has been put on them by the UK because they're saying we've made an agreement and we made yeah. it before the EU for the delivery yeah. of yeah. X number of vaccines. Uh, yeah. The EU is saying we've made a contract, you, it's spelt out and we'll publish the terms of it and you're not delivering on them. Uh, yeah. This all, all of this, of course, comes out of uh, Brexit. Brexit is a father of all this sort of Absolutely. Uh, but it would, I suppose it, it's hard to know, but I guess it would depend on a legal text. That is to say, if AstraZeneca has made a bargain or a contract with the UK to deliver X number of doses, then right. it's legally bound to do so. If it has made a, a contract with the EU to deliver Y number of uh, vaccines, then it's legally bound to do so. So, right. you know, it, it may find itself under severe pressure in terms of... I, I think it really is, Jude, you know. By the way, Jude, the one other factor, a uh, complicating factor is the EU have given a company something like 350 million to help develop this vaccine. So they've, uh, you know, uh, they've got a uh, skin in this particular game both ways. Oh, yeah. Well, I think the EU are very sensitive at the moment because they don't want to come out of this looking, uh, let's say, worse than Britain because yeah. uh, that would suggest that Britain maybe were right to... Uh, like Britain is boasting that because of Brexit, they can get these um, vaccines, right. whereas the EU is floundering, they would say. Right. But I, I right. think it's a fairly straightforward case of uh, establishing whether a contract was signed and agreed on by AstraZeneca with the EU and with the UK. And then, you know, let the well, Van, Van der Leyen and, and Charles Michel are both saying that, that the contract is crystal clear. Yeah, that, right. AstraZeneca uh, made a deal to supply 80 million and they have. Uh, and, uh, and are reneging on it now. Oh, yeah, very silly, very silly. Mm. Not, not a good idea. A lot of the papers pick up on uh, this, you know, the whole story of the vaccine and uh, the handling of the pandemic. And, and I noticed mm. in the Irish Times this morning that Stephen Collins, of all people, yeah. no, no relative, I hasten to add, 
has he's actually taken up the cudgels on behalf of the south south of ireland yeah. and yeah. has said that the state has done reasonably well in the way it's handled the COVID. now yeah. that strikes me as being very interesting because i was watching a program i've forgotten what, what i suppose it was rte yeah, yeah. i was claire Byrne, and they had yeah. um they had ian paisley jr on it yeah. and yeah. he was talking scoffingly of the very bad comparison between the south and the north that the north had handled yeah. things 10 times as well as the south um yeah. stephen collins comparison is between the south and the uk yeah. which of course uh, ian would believe in being oh, definitely yeah. a member yeah. of and treated as yeah. a full member and so on uh, he says that about a 40 percent of the casualty rate in the uk uh occurs in the south so the south yeah. pro rata has only 40 percent as many deaths as the UK had. Yeah, and that's just what, this is, this is what Stephen, Co Stephen Collins is saying. Stephen Collins is saying it. Yeah, Collins yeah. has never lied. Uh, and the National Health Service, uh, he says, looks like it has coped with things much better, actually, than the much criticised, or uh, sorry, the National Health Service has not coped nearly as well with as, as the, a, uh, the, uh, with the uh, pandemic uh, than has the HSE, which everybody yeah. dismisses. And when everybody yeah. mentions, you know, uh, a notion of a United Ireland, they always say, oh, yeah. you need a health service. He's saying yeah. the health service in the South performed better than the UK's National Health Service. What do well, you think about it? Uh, well, uh, well, you know, statistics, like the Ian, Ian Paisley was, uh, uh, he produced statistics that only I think he produced. There, there's no uh, uh, zero um, uh, authenticity in those facts. But Jude, there's 3,000 uh, dead in the, the Republic, but there's 100,000 dead uh, in Britain, plus, 100,000 plus. And when you adjust the, the ratios, the uh, UK, uh, UK uh, when you adjust the ratio, you, uh, uh, the Republic, uh, has a, a, that's a much better on a pro rata basis, but the Republic as well has done better than I think that in Italy than in Spain. That's and I think it's, uh, but I think it's about half or the Germany way, and it's done better in Germany. Now, there's one thing I do agree with if you're ever going to have United Ireland, you're going to have to have a national health service. The two tier system in the Republic is disgraceful. If you've got the money, you can queue jump. It's, it's based on it should be based on need, not on greed, you know, not on the ability to pay. If I, I, if I need an operation, dude, I, I shouldn't be able to do jumps. And if you have got sort of cancer, you sh you are the priority, not my uh, big toe needs a, a nail cut. But 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 in the UK, exactly that can happen. Because oh, I want an you? operation, I can go private, and I can yeah. jump the queue in that sense. And it would yeah. probably be the same doctor doing the operation on me that would have been doing it on a. <laughs> I, but, uh, do, do, what in, the, uh, in the Republic, what, is, what has been happening is, you know, the same surgeon using the same equipment, using the same hospital, uh, can actually queue jump uh, me if I go private. Uh, the thing that uh, Ian Paisley Jr. was on talking about with Claire Byrne, and uh, I've forgotten who the other person was, the, the, you know, the Southern politician, uh, but it was about the notion of treating, it was it not time to treat Ireland, North and South, as a unit and take advantage of the fact that we lived in an island surrounded by water and use yes. that benefit or those geographical circumstances to uh, help us beat the COVID virus. Yeah. Ian wouldn't hear of it. He said, uh, we're no. part of the UK, no question. Now, yeah. Dermot Ferreter has an article in the Irish Times this morning and he's saying uh, it's headed, border a COVID factor that must be grasped. And he says, yeah. it's time this rubbish about political sensitivities of treating right. the island as one unit for pandemic. It says right. it's time we stop that. We're talking about political sensitivities versus life and death. That's yeah. no contest. Well, he doesn't uh, say that. Do, 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 of the, uh, New Zealand, there's two islands. Uh, there, there are two islands in New Zealand, and they were able to shut them off. And uh, if they can do it, we're an island. Why can't we? Shoot? But here's the point, Jude, and let's get this clear. Paisley and Hume and people like that worked together when there was a uh, foot and mouth. And they were they had no bother shutting off cattle coming over from britain but oh no no see when it comes to human beings oh no can't be uh, according to ian paisley this um COVID has an orange and green tint you know uh, when it comes to play politics with it oh pure not just a tint and <laughs> it's suffused with it um, yeah but funny you mentioned that the um uh, new zealand new zealand uh, was came up in this conversation between claire byrne and uh, ian paisley and uh paisley quickly pointed out that um new zealand consists of two islands 
And that's yeah. the way things should have been treated here. It, all the British Isles, in quotation marks, yeah. should have acted yeah. as one unit, which sounds dandy, except if you think about the Stephen Collins story, it would have meant that the South and the North would have taken in, you know, would have been open to all the levels of infection that they, Britain is suffering at present. So yeah. it really, it would have screwed us up big time. Exactly. Uh, well, that, that's his line. Jude, well, you know, what, 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 we, we'll probably have to drop this somebody, but the one factor we've both left out is the role of uh, Boris Johnson and his government. They have been absolute clowns, and, and, and I'm trying to be nice here, and, and Dominic Cummings and all that. See, in the early days, their arrogance, their ignorance, their sort of incompetence uh, was monumental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't really expecting anything else. Um, yeah. And that comes back to actually another, will we move to the second topic maybe? Yeah, uh, go for it. Yeah. Or third perhaps, and that is this question of Nicola Sturgeon and what yeah. she's having to say. What, you, you noted some item from the- I know, no, no, she was talking to Fenton O'Toole in the in Irish Times. Well, this is, this, this is this thing the Irish Times is doing these, these you have to pay 50 euro to Aye. get seeing them on TV. I, I I won't be paying fifty euros, just, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> but you're a subscriber. If you're a subscriber, a subscriber you can never take. Uh, you, you sent me an article uh, and it says subscriber only. So I'm paying the Irish Times 12 euros a month for uh, something that I'm not getting. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, 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 she, she, um, Sturgeon is the latest person. Uh, George Osborne, uh, the Financial Times. Jude, uh, you know, I, I'll hark back one more time to that fabulous thing that was at the waterfront. What was it? Nearly two years ago now. Yeah, yeah. 1500, there was standing room only Saturday morning. 1500 shirt and tie nationalists. Not, um, you know, you know, these are your, none of your scruff. That, not none of your stuff. That, that I was about to say, it, but it didn't mean that the way the sound. <laughs> this was the, your sort of, these are not your sort of. Uh, guys out uh, marching with, with uh, Republican flags. This was your nice white shirt and all that. And I'm deliberately going down this road. And of those people who, who have never stood up for anything in their lives, and I think a lot of them didn't, showed up and something like that, that showed up how pissed off the nationalist community in the North has become. So I, me, me and you, I know you, I saw you were watching, well, I watched the thing midweek about Seamus Malm. It was a webinar thing. And David Trumbull was on it. And when it mentioned again about this thing about Irish Union, he poo pooed it as being a, a non event and so on and so on. And I would love to know who, where did the unionists get this right to uh, determine what the nationalist community is uh, thinking or feeling or wanting? Now, uh, the a campaign for uh, United Ireland hasn't really begun. I think of a really sustained campaign, setting out what's on offer, what needs to be done, sold properly. And the benefits of Irish Union, there was a, a real policy programme put out there. I'd say most people in the North would go for it. Most, na well, nationalists would go, and maybe a considerable number of unions if it was done right. Well, the Day Journal has, has a, a fairly large uh, story this week uh, headed, Irish government should step up preparations for unity poll slash Jackson. And it's uh, this guy, uh, Christopher Jackson, who's a Sinn Féin councillor in Derry. And he's yeah. saying that the Irish government really would want to get its, its skids on or its uh, shoes on. There's an unstoppable, vibrant and flourishing conversation underway about the constitutional future. And he calls on the Irish government to take practical steps of convening a citizens convention, inclusive, inclusive of the entire island, and bringing forward a green paper in Irish unity. I, I would commend and applaud Christopher Jackson to the echo for that. Because that's that's a kind of practical step or requirement that right. should be made by more people. He says, have a citizens' convention and bring forward a green paper. Now, why would the so, uh, Irish government not Dr. do Dr. Collins, that? there's one thing, uh, me and you're going to continually disagree on this. I think Sinn Féin are the wrong people to be uh, promoting Irish unity. Well, I genuinely have, do. But they must be allowed to have a voice. I, I'm not saying... Oh, they're allowed to have a voice. But I like, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's uh, like it's... It's like sending the Nazi officer and, and to the uh, and, and to the Warsaw ghetto. It just doesn't work. Well, that's true. I I, I know the point you're making, Pat, but I still yeah. would I'd be reluctant to shoot the messenger. It doesn't really matter yeah. about the messenger, in my opinion. The point yeah. has been made. What about a citizens' convention, inclusive of the entire island, and bringing forward a green paper by the Irish government? Yeah, Irish I agree with that. I, think I agree with that. Very good practical steps. Absolutely, yeah. I, I have no problem. Jude, you see, we, we keep referring to this, but no, that's shared island uh, vehicle that uh, that Michael Martin has launched. 
and he's given us what is it five million or something right I, I but i i sometimes wonder uh, you know it's like uh, putting uh, half a gallon of petrol in, into a tank, knowing you're going to have people on it the side of the road, like uh, I, I you know that you don't complete the journey. I, I have often felt this is me. I'll, me like the last night, right? You don't make this point. The last night, Andy Kenny was on that uh, that webinar. David Trumbull was on it, and so and see the minute they all start sounding like they're unionists. I'm going like who who represents the nationalist people in the north when uh, David Trumbull and Andy Kenny sound exactly? Oh no. Do they, where, what, at what point the Good Friday Agreement said that uh, Irish unity would come when it was 50% plus one? Well, they they're now trying, to, they're, they're, they're 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 trying to say, no, that's not, that's a recipe for disaster. We need to get to sort of a weighted majority, like two thirds. Where, who asked the nationalist people when the North and Ireland was set up? You know, uh, you know, what, where were they asked? If legally, and by the way, it is a legality, if it says in the Good Friday Agreement, 50% plus one is a, uh, enough for the Irish unity, like I, I for one would say that's fair enough because that was what was voted on. Well, the, the Good Friday Agreement doesn't say actually 50% plus one, but it does say majority. And you're right, 50 plus one. Well, you know, I'm pretty certain it says 50% plus one. I'm pretty certain think so. it does. I, oh, I well, think it does. Will we take a bet? I'll take a bet. Uh, well, actually. <laughs> I'm pretty certain it says pretty. I remember reading okay, five, five quid by a pound. Yeah, the pandemic is over. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, incidentally, incidentally, yeah. in the Belfast Telegraph, when you're talking about these moves and yeah. not shooting the messenger, and this guy Christopher Jackson, a Sinn Féin yeah. councillor, putting forward the idea of a green paper and uh, a citizen convention, in the yeah. Belfast Telegraph, they quote two people: Archbishop Martin, Eamon Martin, and the DUP leader. Arlene Foster. Uh, right. Archbishop Martin, the heading is Archbishop Martin cautions against rush to polls. And he says, yeah. conversations have not even begun in any real manner. And I would be encouraging people to think, converse, to share their differing perspectives. Well, uh, that's exactly what I think we all would want. Uh, exactly. But I, somehow, I, would like to I disagree with that. Uh, to, uh, somehow or another, uh, whether intentionally or not, whether it's Ar Archbishop Martin doing it or whether it's the Belfast Telegraph doing it, that comes out as a message. Don't be getting out, worked up about an Irish unity poll. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ireland Foster. But, I, but I'm kicking I'm kicking in the other way. It's time to start the conversation. Well, I'd agree wholeheartedly. If that's what he's saying, yeah. I'm with him 100%. Uh, yeah. Let's get that, yeah, But like for Judy, he's not, he's not, that's not what he's meaning. But uh, but I, I, I am deliberately doing the opposite. He said, no, don't, don't start the conversation. Don't get excited, but I'm saying it, well, I'm taking his advice. Yeah, let's start the conversation. You think, do you think actually, well, you tell me this. No, no, neither of us can tell what Archbishop Eamon Martin was thinking when he said that or what he meant, really. Uh, what do you think he's thinking? Uh, uh, he's, doing, uh, he's doing the same as uh, Fianna Fáil and others, uh, damping it down, throwing water on it. Uh, you know, uh, let's not get too excited. Let's, let's kick the can down the road for another way. That's the uh, like Augustine, let, Lord, make me pure. I may have pure, but ju not just yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Arlene Foster said, described the very idea of a border poll as being absolutely reckless. Uh, abs of course it, it is. It sounds yeah, it different is. from what she said uh, about seven, eight, ten years ago when she said, be careful what you wish for when people uh, talked about a border poll. Uh, she's not uh, saying that now. She's saying it'd be absolutely <laughs> reckless. Uh, <laughs> Well, you, you, you know, probably we should leave it, but George Osborne's fabulous. Uh, last week, uh, he, the former chancellor said that economically, uh, uh, Northern Ireland uh, will be in the coming years more dependent on the South and on Brussels than they will in London. Yes. And that uh, well, he says the economics are already in place and the politics will follow. With that, I would I would leave it at that because that seems well, a good summation to me. Well, let me make a, a couple of footnotes then. One is that the uh, ch assistant chief constable was tweeting about signs in loyalist areas, uh, objecting, uh, not violently, yeah. but be, being very critical of this notion of border checks at Larne and so on. Yeah. Uh, and somebody had uh, commented on this tweet and said, if that came from a loyalist leader, paramilitary leader, or even a, a unionist councillor, you, or a unionist politician, you might accept it. But coming from the acting chief or the assistant chief constable, it's really right. essentially saying, you know, uh, we better watch it now. This, these, this, we better give a rethink on these yeah. borders at uh, Larne and Rosslare or wherever. Um, yeah. uh, I, I just thought that was bad. Um, 
The other thing do, do, was... Do, 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 no, 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 all the Catholics and the Nationalists, but I had to live in a, in a place for uh, about 50 years with uh, a border and with uh, where they weren't listened to and so on. I don't remember the RUC or the PSNI, I know, being concerned about their, their views. Uh, mind you, we're still living in it. Yeah. Some of us. I uh, know, yeah. Some yeah. of us, all right, for you guys are... And in the land of freedom, but no, we're not. But what, what, what I meant was that they, I know, I don't even, but you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. The other thing was, uh, Nicola Sturgeon was very interesting. Yeah. And it was put to her, I think it was in the various times, but it doesn't really matter. In several of the papers, she's reported where Boris Johnson was coming up to Scotland. And she yeah. asked him, was his journey really necessary? And she essentially <laughs> said, you know, the reason he's up there is to try to defend the union. He's fearful yeah. that in the next election, the SNP uh, will swamp everybody will, else uh, and there'll be yeah. another um, independence referendum. She says, if Boris refuses, as he says he will, to allow yeah. her to have a legal referendum, yeah. she will take him to court. Yeah. And he'll have to go to court and defend what he's doing. And she says it'll be obvious that there will be against the democratic wishes of the Scottish people. And she, finally, she says, all I would say to Boris is, good luck. Uh, well, you know, I presume that, 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 that uh, the Tory government are looking at what happened in Spain when the Basques are tried, you know, um, try to go separate, you know, they... Uh, Catalans, I think yeah. what... Uh, 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 Catalans, I think what's, um, what do you call it, um, Sturgeon will do, She's, she will go the legal route now, the Catalans didn't go the legal route. Uh, they actually went against the Spanish court, which, of course, was rigged against them anyway. But uh, uh, Sturgeon, uh, Jude, if they get 52% uh, uh, the SNP the next, you know, I don't understand how legally uh, the London can sort of turn around. Or, by the way, the, the one of the great factors in uh, growth of Scottish independence is they detest Boris Johnson. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. The very fact that he went there yesterday yeah. probably, probably helps SNP know this buffoon, uh, buffoon Boris uh, from Eton and with his chums and all that sort of stuff. You know, if you if you're looking for a caricature of a you know, of a prime minister, he would be it. You know, that yeah. sort of a, a, you know. He, I sometimes wonder how did people elect that? You know, it, it just comes across well, as a clown. You know, he was the, he was a very popular lawyer, uh, mayor of London. People yeah. liked, and I have to confess, I was one of them. People mm. liked his sort of jokiness. Uh, yeah. He was always a sort of a lively presence. A, a, a bit like that other ghastly man whose name is, eludes me at the moment now. Uh, it was Mr. Brexit and who's faded from... Uh, Nigel Farage. Nigel. Uh, yeah. He was lively and you felt, oh, you're going to at least get a, a good, smart answer from him. But yeah. that has been washed away now. I just can't bear the man. I really can't. Yeah. He's been stripped yeah. of whatever credibility he ever had. But yeah. uh, I must say, they look like very two very contrasting figures. Boris, big and beefy, and oh yes, and Latin tags yeah. and so on. Yeah. And uh, Nicola Sturgeon, slim and quiet and, uh, yeah. you know, really in control. Yeah. And she's really uh, popular in Scotland, what's more. Uh, yeah, but as well, she's a real politician and she's always on top of her brief. She knows what she's talking about. And she's totally reasonable, and she makes her superb. Every I've never heard her making a bad argument. You know, every time she uh, she gives a point of view, there's a reason. Uh, Boris bullshits all day long and comes off the top of his head, and then if they apologise later, or uh, I'll leave you this, Jude. He wouldn't go on uh, a program with Andrew Neil prior to the last election because his grasp of detail is zero. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, final, final, very short little item. Uh, I'm not sure it's in the papers, but uh, I suppose it has been discussed at some stage in the papers. This question of football games, Premier League particularly, and yeah. watching it on TV with no crowds. You have fairly strong views on that. Dude, I remember uh, I used to have Sky. I haven't got it this last night, but I remember um, we would sit here on a Sunday afternoon watching uh, Manchester United versus Liverpool glued to the TV. And, and you know, and Jude, we would nearly have arguments nearly you know, in the middle of the game and all that. Dude, see now I watched you know, the last night. I watched the game. Dude, I, I, halfway through it, I found myself on social media going, "Oh, I, I, you know, I, 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 zero. What, where's is it? Mars has got zero, zero atmosphere. I don't know what. What are you? <laughs> you know, what, the, the, the Liverpool uh, match night match was on a Sunday, a couple of Sundays ago. Dude, it was the most boring game I've seen in years. Stop watching it. It was so bad. 
Well, I, I would tend to agree with you. I, we, and you would put that down, would you, to the lack of crowds? Aye, Judy. See, you know, if somebody does a dirty tackle, there are crowds going on. By the way, I must Alex Ferguson. Never thought I would love that long to say I must <laughs> Alex Ferguson. Because every week you were waiting for a sort of a, a bit of a, a, a controversy, Fergie time and all this sort of Jude, now, you know, you know uh, by the way, you're sitting watching a lot of teams now, uh, a lot of players, not not a single homegrown one on them, neither, never mind Irish. There's ah, Europe. yeah, yeah. I think you have to accept that, though. I mean, this is a European uh, league, essentially, or maybe uh, a world league. Uh, uh, I, I think once you accept the fact that they can buy players, you have to go with that. Now, I, I to a great extent, I would have I've agreed with you. I, uh, part of the problem for me is there are so many matches on there's about 10 matches televised this week. So yeah. many. You get sick yeah. of a whole lot. It's yeah. like having too many channels to choose from. Yeah. You watch nothing. Um, but last night, as it happens, I watched Liverpool versus Spurs. Spurs, 3-1. And I can tell you now, especially in the second half, I was clinging onto the game. I was watching yeah. it wrapped. I, I, now, I, I love, I, but Liverpool and the Spurs both go for, go for their, their attacking teams. Oh, yes. And I mean, it, it would have been worth the, the license fee just to see the uh, expression of Mourinho's face. Uh, <laughs> Whenever I the, second, put... the second goal <laughs> went in my, on, yeah. against them. Uh, yeah. I'd say, I still think it can be very exciting to watch. Uh, and they do cover it. I mean, in terms of their camera work, it's very, very good. Um, you do. I do miss the, the audience or the you know the yeah. spectators, but uh, I think they're like um, how would I describe it? They're like a sort of a pl a, a pleasant padding. You know, it's nice aye. to add but something. Aye, to aye, it. But you, that's, but that's this, the one the good game. The game's the thing, Pat. The game is aye. the thing, not the audience. Aye, but, aye, but hold on. No, I disagree. See when Liverpool and uh, Spurs going on and Harry Kane always go, and they're going on great. Dude, sit and watch Newcastle uh, versus West Brom. When there's 11 people behind the ball and they never cross the halfway line, I, I like you know, talk about uh, paint dry. I know well, you're talking about games, you're talking about uh, poor games. I'm just saying, games in the Premier League without without spectators can be very good. I thought last night, was I, 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 yeah, I've, I've seen a couple, but you they're they are like sort of diamonds and rust, you know, they're, they're so rare. It used to be the other way around. Even Jude, see when there's a crowd, even a bad game can be good because the atmosphere can you know, take over. No, some player does something stupid and the uh, crowd get on it, and suddenly yeah, there's a bit yeah. of an atmosphere. Go, see, <laughs> uh, you know, so you need, even uh, no, the old joke. Uh, there used to be a joke on Fun Fun Park. There were so few players, uh, or there's so few crowd. They used to introduce the crowd to the players rather than the players <laughs> to the crowd. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. Here, here's my last word, and that, and then we'll leave it at that, and you can come back if you want. Uh, I think the reason that you and maybe I aren't all that keen anymore uh, on football and TV is we're getting old. Our interest nah. in football, as well as so many other things, is fading. No, nah. Jeepers meet me father. He loved to use ninety, and he was still he was still watching football and still getting excited. Uh, I'll leave you this one, Jude. My father, he was a big sports fan. And when he used to be watching boxing, we used to watch him watching the boxing. You'd swear to you, he was. <laughs> oh, God be with the days. <laughs> why, is, why isn't St. Columns used to do the same kind of thing, uh, watching a, a game of handball? You'd have a crowd uh, of spectators around. And guys uh, used to put their hands in their pockets. Uh, and people used to say they were playing pocket billiards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pat. All the best, Jim. Thanks very much. Good luck. Okay, Good luck, Jim. Bye.